This is a follow-up video for the other two videos that I had the phone in the wrong position for proper viewing of a video on YouTube. Maisie the Shop Dog. 65 Mustang. It's my wife's car. So we have um, try, been trying to figure out what we're going to do with this car for the last 14 years or what I'm going to do with this car for the last 14 years so I want to do vintage road race which means that you're going to have to have a manual transmission and my wife doesn't want to shift the gears so then we thought about it some more so then I always have liked the super stock cars I've liked the Thunderbolts I've liked the old Dodges. Uh, I like this old super stock cars. So we thought, well, we'll stick a, an FE in here. Preferably a 427. Because that's, that's just the epitome of FE motors. And that's what would have come in a 65 Mustang if this car existed. So I punched into Google 65 Mustang with FE installed and I browse through all of the different forums where there's been many a person that has posed this question of putting an FE into a 65 Mustang and almost all of the feedback was negative. It, if you mention 65, 66, and big block in the same sentence you get all of this flack why don't you just put a small block in it why are you going to hack up the shack towers it's too much weight it's uh it's dumb just put a small block in it just all this crappy feedback so uh with like the uh the Fairlane, the early Fairlane, the Comets, the Falcons, they have kits where you can just order the plates and they give you like a little diagram where you can cut with your scissors and place it onto the shock tower and then you trim it off. Well, they don't have any of that for a 65 Mustang. So I cut the uh, a horizontal horizontal line with my cutoff wheel across the upper control arm mounting point through the contour on each side so it was, it was flat and even and then I ran my masking tape up and over and down as straight as possible on both sides because both shock towers are slightly different they don't have the same shape and then I cut the shock towers out as carefully as possible to, to maintain uh, the alignment I guess of the upper control arms and then I boxed it back in with eighth inch plate welded it back up I picked up some CPP upper control arms they're not adjustable they just uh, the factory stamp steel ones protrude too far past the pivot point to work. So we need to get this upper A arm control arm as close to the shock tower as possible. The lower control arm is just basically a boxed control arm with a an adjustable heim joint on it. So just in case we need to do any adjusting we can because a lot of your adjustment has been taken out of your upper control control arm. that's where you adjust your camber and caster so this is basically all stock 65 66 mustang stuff you've got the stock coil spring i believe it's a 520 which means it's uh, an inch and a half drop, uh, Coney shock, 
and then I uh, put a weld in Tin Man Fabrication subframe connector. We've got a Hustler Headman uh, header for a 67 to 70 uh, FE Mustang. So it's a two inch primary and a three and a half inch collector. We've got a 68 Mustang uh, 39428 radiator, fan shroud, upper mount, upper and lower hoses, stock. The lower mount had to be, had to be made so I just bent a piece of uh, inch and a half uh, aluminum into a U and then put the stock rubber saddle in it. <clears throat> Used a DuraSpark electronic ignition uh, distributor and coil. And then NPD sells a, a wiring harness that hooks all that stuff together. We've got the uh, Profit Performance Automatic Bell Housing and a Performance Automatic 2800 stall 10 inch torque converter. We have lengthened the upper rod and that's just the stock linkage for the small block 65 Mustang. The transmission Cross member is stock in the stock location. The, uh, the motor mounts are total control 68 Mustang big block motor mounts that are essentially solid with a rubber bushing in them. And uh, I'm going to run the uh, eight inch rear end. I'm going to pull the third member out of it, rebuild it. And I've got some 411 gears that I'm going to stick in it. Um, so yeah, so it's all in there and there's very little margin for error because the headers are so close to the shock tower that there isn't there's a, there's a couple of the bolts that you can just barely get around the corner and into the header flange to start um, so as far as the weight is concerned you've got an aluminum manifold you've got aluminum water pump housing you've got a trunk mount battery and long tube headers instead of cast iron. So as far as, and also there's a C4 instead of a C6. And um, so that calculates out to be about 70 pounds more than a 289, which isn't a heck of a lot of, a lot of weight. So to all the people that, that dislike 65, 66 Mustangs and dislike the idea of sticking an FE into a 65, 66 Mustang. All I can say is we just want a car that's slightly different than every other 65, 66 small block Mustang out there. You have got all of this history with the FE motor. You've got the Cobra, you've got the GT40, you've got the Thunderbolt, you've got the, the drag cars, the Falcons. Uh, what else? All of this stuff, all of this racing history. You've got the Cobra Jet, you've got the 427 side oilers, you pretty much anything older than 69 
had some sort of FE in it. I know a lot of people think of FE and they think of 390, 360 out of a truck. But there is a lot of racing history in the FE. So, Maisie the Shop Dog, 65 Mustang, FE. Hopefully I'll be able to, be able to get it uh, painted at some point and back on the road. Thanks for watching.